What's up guys? It's me again, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to continue our solution to problem 7.11 of 4th edition of Griffiths. So recall that we have a square loop made of aluminum and then it is placed on top of a portion of a uniform magnetic field B that's pointing into the page. Okay, and then we allow this loop to fall under gravity. Okay. So, by calculating the gravitational force, or by relating the gravitational force on the loop, as well as the net magnetic force on the loop, we ended up with the equation of motion of the loop in terms of the gravitational field, alpha, where alpha is b squared is h squared over mr, where h is the width or the size or the side of your square loop. B is the magnetic field. This is pointing into the page. So right now, we're going to find the velocity of the loop as a function of time. And we will calculate how long does it take to say reach, uh, to reach say, 90% of the terminal velocity. Okay? So in order to calculate the velocity as a function of time, we will solve for the equation of motion of the loop. So here we have, so we can uh, solve this by rewriting this equation into an integral equation, where in the, uh, integral of dt will now be equal to integral of dv over g minus alpha v. Okay, for initial time zero, let's say the velocity would be initially at let's say v not first and then at a later time t the velocity is at vt so solving this equation we now have the velocity as a function of time uh, which uh, sorry the you can solve this as follows so we can solve the integral on both sides okay so in this case we now have t equals uh, the integral of this would be 1 over alpha a negative 1 over alpha times the natural logarithm of g minus alpha b and then we evaluate it from v naught to v Okay, so in this case, we now have negative 1 over alpha times a natural logarithm of g minus alpha v divided by g minus alpha v naught. Okay, so we can do some algebraic manipulation here to, to express the velocity as a function of time. Of course, you can do that later. Okay, do it right now. Just pause the video. Okay, so once you do the algebraic manipulation, you should end up with this expression or this uh, function. V is a function of time will now be equal to G over alpha times 1 minus e to the negative alpha t plus v naught e to the negative alpha t okay now let's assume now if for example the velocity at time equal to zero will be zero so that means started from rest this will give us this uh, expression okay so v naught will be equal to zero so this that means the velocity as a function of time will now be equal to g over alpha my times one minus e to the alpha t or in terms of the terminal velocity we calculated earlier g over alpha is the terminal velocity so this is vt Minus 1 minus e to the negative alpha t. 
So this is the velocity as a function of time. Now to calculate how long will it take for the velocity to reach 90% of the terminal velocity. So here we're going to set some conditions. So we need to set that for V over Vt. So this is the fraction at which the V reaches uh, the, velo the terminal velocity. And this should be 90% or 0.9. So from here we can see that V over Vt will now be equal to 1 minus E to the negative alpha t. So in this case, this becomes 0.9 equals 1 minus e to the negative alpha t. Or e to the negative alpha t is now equal to 0.1 or 1 over 10. Okay, so uh, manipulating this algebraic expression, we end up with alpha t will now be equal to the natural logarithm of 10. So therefore, the time to take to reach 90% of the terminal velocity would be 1 over alpha times ln of 10. In terms of the terminal velocity, this is equal to okay, this is equal to uh, Vt over G. Because remember that Vt is equal to G over alpha. So 1 over alpha would be equal to Vt over G times ln 10. Again, so in your problem set, I will give you the the numerical values and we will calculate or you will be able to calculate that the you will be able to calculate the uh, terminal velocity as well as the time it takes for the terminal velocity to, to reach 90 uh, time, uh, sorry the time it takes for the velocity to reach 90% of the terminal velocity okay so that's it that's the complete solution to problem 7.11 and i hope you learned something today and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye